Greetings and welcome everyone to a Creative Outlet bonus. Yes, not a normal uh, Creative Outlet podcast episode, but uh, uh, unlike other prior Creative Outlet bonuses, I am actually releasing this episode to the audio-only folks over on uh, Anchor.fm, and which just inevitably releases all of my work to other audio platforms. Um, I did make a certain promise in the intros that I recorded earlier this semester. I may have talked about it in the uh, end of summer, start of the semester update uh, video on the COP uh, YouTube channel as well that I would be uh, making a, a piece here on the final reveal, the final Smash Brothers character uh, reveal. I just, I did not think it would be this soon. Actually, my prediction was going to be that the final character would be revealed at the Game Awards, so I guess just uh, that, that little brief aside, now I am I have no idea what Nintendo's going to show at the Game Awards, if anything at all, so that's going to be a very pleasant surprise uh, for us in the coming months, I'm sure. But what we're here to talk about today uh, is to fulfill that promise, fulfill what I said I would talk about, which is uh, that now we know the final, the last fighter coming to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I feel like I have to to finish uh, this little series I started with uh, Byleth last God, what was it, like January or March of 2020, whenever uh, they were revealed. Uh, so let's let's just uh, get this get this train here rolling. Uh, I guess the only other housekeeping thing I have before I really fully uh, get started is that indeed I uh, I, I do plan on having uh, on. Uh, uh, not doing as much fancy schmancy editing stuff for the the video portion here so um just bear with me on that i'm just trying to get something nice and quick out here since it is after all a creative outlet bonus rather than just a a formal creative outlet pod cast so i just want to just going to get right into the topics uh, if anything i might just chapter these out uh in the video format so, starting with some of the littler news, I will reveal who the character is, although I'm sure if you're listening to this, you already have a general idea. Uh, we do have some amiibo news, which is exciting for me. We indeed did get to see the reveal of the Steve and Alex amiibos today. Now, yes, I suppose that is a little bit surprising for some folks that Alex, the uh, female alternate costume for Steve, is uh, actually getting a separate amiibo when Byleth... Uh, who also comes in male and female variants, did not receive a a, a separate amiibo figure. But as uh, I saw someone point out, as of course, before I got on here, just reading about this on some forums, like the good old uh, r slash amiibo subreddit, I, uh, someone made the good point because I was I was just as surprised that, oh, Alex is getting a separate amiibo, which means that's another $15.99 I'm going to be spending on another figure. Dang it, Sakurai. Uh, the reason for this compared to Byleth is pretty simple. It's not something that you probably, like, it was something that you'd necessarily think about, but, I mean, they're basically the same figure. Maybe they're the tiniest bit different as far as, like, the length, the, 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 the width of the arms, but they're basically the same figure, and they're just cubes. <laughs> they're just, they're just blocks. They're the easiest darn things to, uh, to have a machine sculpt, and all that needs to be different on them is how they're textured, so... It's not really a surprise that both are getting separate amiibo figures. Uh, it was also confirmed in uh, in, in Sakurai's little video today, his final one, uh, that Sephiroth, Pyra, and Mithra, as well as Kazuya, all of the other characters that have been revealed thus far uh, as DLC, will also be receiving amiibo figures down the line. We just don't have um, samples for what their figures may look like. We just happen to have... I don't think Sakurai, actually, if I remember correctly, he did not actually have samples there, like how he did for Min Min, as well as... Uh, um, for Joker and Hero and, and, and all the other, uh, figures like that. He just had, uh, mock-up images here. And they're, they're, I mean, it looks like Steve and it looks like Alex in, uh, Smash Brothers. They, they look exactly correct. So they will be, uh, launching alongside, 
uh, Min Min, uh, her amiibo figure. So I will be certainly looking out for that. Uh, we also had the final round 11 of Mii Fighter costumes, and I tell ya, this might actually be the most disappointing set of Mii Fighter costumes since uh, Cloud was revealed for Super Smash Bros. for 3DS and Wii U, where we literally only got a Geno costume and the Chocobo hat. Uh, for this round of costumes, we receive an Octoling wig, as well as a Judd from Splatoon and Splatoon 2 hat. Uh, so it's literally just two hats. And the only final costume uh, represents the Doom Slayer, is how they uh, call them. Um, but as Sakurai rightly pointed out, he is commonly just called Doom Guy from, uh, what's it called? Oh yeah, Doom. <laughs> so that... Just kind of put the final nail in that coffin for people who are wanting our final character revealed today to be uh, the Doom guy. He is not uh, the character who got that, um, that, 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 uh, I was going to say pleasure, but I don't know if that's the right word. The, the joy maybe of being the uh, final character added to Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, but he's still going to be in there in the form of a Mii Fighter costume, not unlike many of the other, uh, honestly, pretty darn cool costumes that we got over the course of the DLC, like Sans. Not that he's really my thing, but, I mean, it's still pretty significant to have um, an, an independent uh, game character in there like that. Uh, Cuphead, uh... Altair from Assassin's Creed, uh, though that's just a few of them that are, are coming to my mind. So the Doom Slayer just gets added to that pile. But yeah, it's just those three. And I guess, you know, in fairness, if anything, I had been pointing out along the way how it's like, man, there's, there's like no sword fighter costumes. And then the last couple of groups have had a ton of sword fighter costumes. Then I was like, well, maybe, maybe now I got to change my campaign to be like, where are all the gunner costumes? And the literal last costume, the only, uh, outfit that comes with a full character outfit and uh helmet not just a a, a piece of headgear is for the gunner so you know a hundred percent gunner representation i guess i can't be too upset <laughs> so uh with all those little details out of the way let's talk about the final character coming to super smash brothers ultimate it I could not believe this when I saw it. Also, I was one of the many who got unfairly spoiled with this because um, on Tuesdays, I have a class at 8.50 a.m. First off, you know, it just couldn't be 9 a.m. And it couldn't just be, <laughs> it couldn't be 9 a.m. to 9.50 a.m. It had to be 8.50 to 9.40 a.m. It's kind of weird uh, scheduling how that is. So I didn't actually get to watch the presentation live, which made me pretty sad. Uh, but I did get, I, I had to see one stupid YouTube like thumbnail, even though I had set up my phone here on the app to open up to the video. No, it just couldn't work like that. Um, I did get spoiled, but the, 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 the actual reveal was actually pretty darn good. Even if this is a character that I don't love, the final character coming to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is Sora from Kingdom Hearts. The character that I would maintain, and now there's even ev like strong evidence for this, is the most requested character in Super Smash Bros. history since, uh, I mean, God, going back to Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Um, in fact, one little detail in the presentation was Sakurai even talked about going back um, to the Smash for 3DS and Wii U days, how uh, they did, uh, Nintendo did hold the Smash Brothers fighter ballot, right? And the idea of that was supposed to be, who do people want to have as a Smash character? We'll make them a character. And I distinctly remember in the video, the final Smash for 3DS and Wii U presentation, Sakurai being like, the one who won is Bayonetta. And that's why we got Bayonetta as the last character for Smash 4. But as it turns out, the most requested character, no surprise to me, was actually Sora. And you know what? I, not to like toot my own horn here, because I'm sure this was a common belief among uh, many folks, 
I was pretty sure that Bayonetta was not the most requested character. Like, don't get me wrong, I, I was fairly certain that Bayonetta was a strongly requested character for, um, to be added to Super Smash Brothers. but I was like, mm, number one in Europe, overall number one worldwide, something about that just doesn't, doesn't sit right. Something that, that just doesn't add up, considering all the other polls that I've seen that, like, you know, Sora's up there, uh, King K. Rule, of course, this is before Ultimate. King K. Rule is up there. Um, I mean, really, just a bunch of the characters that got added to Ultimate were up there. Ridley. That's why he was kind of one of the first new characters added to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Um, so, the, and, and that's kind of been the mantra of Smash Ultimate and the DLC, I've noticed, is let's just fulfill as many fan dreams and, and Sakurai's dreams and a little bit of Nintendo's dreams uh, as we want with these characters and i could not think of a better choice to end this on even if he's not really my thing um than to have sora be our final character as the most requested character in smash history um and i tell you like it's just impressive that he's a character in the first place because the the sheer legal uh what's a good word for it the sheer legal like trickery no maybe that's not the right word there, there's a word that i want to use for it that i just can't think of or maybe i just can't express what it would be but like all of the effort that had to be put in to make sora be a character in this game had to have been like insane i cannot imagine how much uh like legal hell sakurai and and nintendo had to go through to get Sora as a character because I mean already uh, recall that Square Enix wasn't super easy to work with in getting uh, Cloud back for Super Smash Brothers Ultimate and then somehow Sakurai and team are able to negotiate not one not two but three more Square Enix characters as DLC that had to be quite the quite the work you know you had Hero from Dragon Quest and of course the music with Koichi Sugiyama that's all that itself is another probably difficult legal can of worms. You had Sephiroth after how challenging it must have been to get Cloud back into the game. And now you have Sora, who I'm, I'm sure at this point, Square Enix was probably a little bit more amicable as far as like, well, we've already got these three. Let's just add more on to uh, the pile. But now you have to work with arguably, if, if it isn't the biggest uh, company on the planet, one of the like top five like juggernaut corporations in the form of Disney and you know it I in obviously it paid off in that Sora is in the game people's dreams are finally being achieved of having Sora as a character but you know actually having watched the whole presentation I don't know if it fully paid off because Kind of like how Kingdom Hearts 3 was uh, criticized for um, being for being like all Disney. Sora in Smash Brothers, I think, has the exact opposite problem. Like the problem that Kingdom Hearts 3 had is that it was all Disney and no Final Fantasy repre was represented in the game. Because remember, if you don't know anything about Kingdom Hearts, and I, I, I know what i know from the osmosis of having watched more videos about it i haven't really had an interest in playing it although i i i, I would be more down um today than i think i have been at any other point in um my life with the series uh so far but that's beside the point um you know it's supposed to be this crossover of disney worlds and final fantasy which that what a weird premise to to say the least like i what you, that's such a strange idea that's part of why i was like uh i don't know if i i don't know how uh, much i really want to play it because that's like i don't know how that can work and apparently I mean, it, it must work because it's a super popular series you know people wanted kingdom hearts 3 forever and then eventually it came out and didn't entirely live up to the expectations but i guess that's just kind of the nature of having wanted a game for over 10 years um but Sora in Smash Brothers has basically just whatever there is from uh, 
Square Enix. You know, there is not a single Mickey, there is not a single Donald, there is not a single Goofy in sight. And I guess, you know, maybe to be fair, I'm not, I would assume that's more a Disney thing, because I'm sure Disney would have been like, you must pay us lots and lots of money to get these characters in your game, since, you know, it's not like this is a Disney game that Disney is contracting out to have made under their dollar. This is a Nintendo game that they would want to contract out Mickey and Donald and Goofy from Disney. So I'm sure that has to be a massive expense. At the same time, Sakurai seems pretty adamant that, you know, Smash Brothers is just supposed to be a celebration of gaming and having uh, these explicitly non-game characters kind of goes against that. So I don't want to discount that aspect of um, not having the Disney assets in the game. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm leaning more toward it being a Disney issue than a Sakurai issue. Because, I mean, it is supposed to be the marriage of Final Fantasy and Disney. So, you know, just totally getting rid of the Disney aspect is like not even having half of the Kingdom Hearts experience. So I'm not sure where exactly uh, the the chips fell on that, but nonetheless, we we have uh, we we have Sora in game. And you know, he's he's a bit more of an interesting character than I thought he would be. I am I'm I'm actually a decent bit interested in trying him out. Now granted obviously I've I've played every DLC character and that reminds me uh, you know, one thing that I've been really kind of irritated with with this series is I just want to get out one of these podcasts before the character comes out. Now I have 13 days to do this because I'm recording this on the 5th. So there, it will definitely get out before Sora is released. In fact, I'm going to get right to work on editing this tonight so that I can hopefully get it out really, really quickly. Um, but... That is a complete digression. Uh, Sora, right? Um, apparently he's going to be a very floaty, almost Mewtwo-esque character, which I find interesting. Uh, of course, I, I just... I don't know a ton about Kingdom Hearts, so I didn't... I, I would not have guessed that that is um, exactly what he would, he would be like, but, you know, I, I like playing as Lucas. I like playing as Ness. I like playing as Mewtwo, but I don't find myself doing... I, I just haven't found myself playing as Mewtwo very much lately. I, I would be totally down for uh, getting back into uh, playing as uh, Mewtwo, but, uh, you know, beyond that, he seems to be a, a mostly, you know, a general sword character doing sword swings and strikes and uh, obviously resembling what happens in Kingdom Hearts. Uh, he's got just a... I mean, the normal attacks are pretty generic moves. Like Sakurai, did a, you just kind of describe them, and I, I just I don't have a, a ton to, to commentate on them because they're pretty, like, he swings the sword forward and spins it, and it's just a general sword combo. Like, what more can I really add to that? He does a horizontal swing. He does a, a vertical, like, fwa. Uh, this is really not a ton to it. Um, as far as, um, like, the actual interesting moves I tend to find are those uh, that are the the specials. So he does have, of course, four specials, like every, every other character. Let me start with the down special. Down special is uninteresting because it's just a counter, like so many other characters. Yay! Um, but it is at least a little bit different as, um, unlike most normal uh, counter attacks, the, the, the character that you're countering against uh, does momentarily get thrown off. So with most counters, the attack just kind of stops, and then you counter with your own attack. Um, in this case, uh, the opponent gets thrown off balance, and then uh, they're hit by the attack. Um, much like, uh, who's a good example uh, with this? Much like with uh, King K. Rule's uh, counter, it doesn't do so well with hitting uh, behind uh, Sora, so don't don't get too confident there, I would say. <laughs> Um, and let's see, anything else? Oh, yeah, kind of like, uh, 
uh, Min Min. He can also counter projectiles with his counter. I mean, Min Min, it's with the, uh, I think it's the up smash. Is it the up smash, the up tilt? Either way, it's the one where she just kind of flipped, like there's a back flip. Um, so the, the reflection has a little bit of a, uh, uh, a boost in, in power. Uh, but of course, like I said, it's only really to things that are up front, kind of like Lucas's PSI magnet, how it's only up front and not totally around him. Uh, as far as, uh, I think the side special is actually one of his most interesting moves. So his side special is more like an up special. In fact, Sakurai specifically compared it to, uh, Pikachu and Pichu's quick attack. Um, Sora gets to charge multiple times to the point where there's even a reticle on screen so it's like you can go here and here and here which again is similar to pikachu's up specials so it's kind of interesting uh, maybe a bit like uh sephiroth's octa slash uh as well so uh you can increase your travel distance up to those three times uh and it's similar to how uh attacks in the the various kingdom hearts games work because a lot of your time is spent in the air not so much on the ground i think you do spend more time on the ground in kingdom hearts one compared to the other games based on the footage i've seen um but you do spend a decent chunk of your attacks just like going wah, wah, in the air like straight up peter panning this sort of thing um the up special is also one that isn't too too interesting because it's basically just link spin attack um, you know, he'll still, he'll still like jump up and go Fwa! like Link does. So again, nothing like super special, but, uh, you know, combine that with the side special, the Sonic Blade, uh, up special is called the Aerial Sweep. Uh, you could get a pretty good recovery, which is great considering, um, with Sora being so floaty, like those two, uh, characters that I, or three that I like, Ness, uh, Mewtwo and Lucas, it's gonna, it makes it a lot easier to get back on the stage if, you know, you have a good recovery since you're easily launched off in the first place. Um, and then the neutral special is also pretty, pretty unique as well. Um, it's just called magic. It cycles through three different spells. These must be common spells in Kingdom Hearts. Again, haven't played it. Um, but they're Fireaga, Thundaga, and Blizzaga. Guess what those are? A fire spell, a thunder spell, and an ice spell. Um, so you start off with Fireaga. Uh, and that just, um, you know, it's a, it's basically like Heroes uh, Neutral Special. You just shoot forward a fireball. How creative. Uh, Thundaga is uh, a little bit interesting. That's the second one. So go Fireaga, Thundaga, then Blizzaga, and then cycle back to um, Fireaga. You know, Thundaga makes three uh, vertical lightning bolts. I don't know who's outside right now thinking it's a good idea to mow the lawn at, at 6 o'clock on the housing staff, but I'm going to be really upset. So if the sound sounds different, that's why. Uh, so I can get that sound of the motor out of here. But I digress. Let's actually talk about Thundaga. Uh, it creates like three lightning bolts. So, you know, PK Thunder does like the ball of lightning, goes all over the place. And, you know, like it's, it's weird. There's no consistent style of lightning attack in smash brothers apparently so i'd almost compare it to like uh one of palutena's custom specials in smash 4 it kind of reminded me of the radiant light but in this case it's just like three lightning bolts forward in front of you all at the same time um whereas blizz aga uh reminds me similarly to the ice climbers down special that's uh, whichever one allows them to just shoot like ice out of their hands uh in front of them in fact it's more or less the same it's a sh it's a stream of ice crystals um so like i said you cycle through all of these so if you like one or the other you kind of have to cycle through to get back to the one that you like um, and like with most projectiles, you know, you can, you can absorb them if you're game and watch, you can pocket them if you're villager, you can reflect them, you know, all just the basic sort of stuff, uh, with the moves. Uh, now Sakurai said he wasn't going to show the final smash, but then I guess he must've changed plans because he had to show off the final smash in his, uh, character demonstration of Sora. It's called sealing the keyhole. And, I mean, it's just another basic, uh, uh, 
what you call the cutscene final smash. So it's really nothing like super duper special, but it's just kind of funny, you know. Sora locks away whoever gets trapped in uh, uh, whoever gets trapped in this beam in front of them in this door. Uh, in fact, it's supposed to apparently resemble the door of darkness. I don't remember. Is that a? Um, let me just look here. Is that a? Like Kingdom Hearts 2 location? Is that one of the Kingdom Hearts 1 locations? I don't uh, recall. This is a Kingdom Hearts. Come on, where is it? Uh, it doesn't say. Um, it must just be a general, a general? Wow, general is the word I'm looking for. A general Kingdom Hearts location. Um, but you just kind of get locked behind this door. But instead of it being a door with uh just a giant door it has a large smash logo uh so uh he just kind of seals the keyhole to the door with a beam from the keyblade and it does a bunch of damage so nothing super exciting but it's it's just kind of funny looking and i you know that sometimes that's all you need out of final smash kind of like how wario's wario man now is just him getting doing a bunch of attacks on the character on whoever got caught up in the attack it's it's just something funny. That's a nice, a neat little cutscene. Uh, now, the alternate costumes apparently had quite a bit of intentionality thrown behind them as well. This is something that I've highlighted when there are pretty unique ones. Um, I don't remember what the players' 6, 7, and 8 variations represent. Apparently, they must be just, like, unique outfits within the game for each, or, like, for each um, costume variant of Sora. Um, but one, two, three, four, and five are the interesting ones for me. So, uh, the player one costume, that's just his original Kingdom Hearts one costume. Uh, player two is Kingdom Hearts two's costume. Uh, three, just, and I'm not, I'm assuming this is just because Nintendo is being Nintendo. Uh, they did the Kingdom Hearts 3D Dream Drop Distance costume. So that was, that was, of course, you know, Kingdom Hearts 3D. Can you guess what that was on? the 3ds so i'm sure nintendo is like well let's get a, a costume from a game that was on our systems god so that was the compromise for that like i said six seven and eight apparently must be variants from each of those games or well no for oh six is a variant a variant of some kind for kingdom hearts 2 and player seven is a variant on the kingdom hearts 3d costume um, and then the player four costume represents Kingdom Hearts three. So then the player eight costume is some variant on that. I, again, I, no knowledge of the hearts of the kingdom. Um, but to me, the fun one, and I'm sure this is going to be the one that everyone's playing online. Not that it matters for me because I can't play online. Uh, I'll refer everyone to my, uh, online college gaming problems segment, uh, if you're confused about what I mean, uh, his player five costume is apparently representative of the timeless river level in Kingdom Hearts 2, which means that he looks like rubber hose 1930s Disney, and that is st stupidly cool. I, I I am always going to... to uh, play as that costume if I ever get the opportunity. I mean, I, I just, I usually I tend to find myself just playing as the normal costume, but if there are really cool ones like that one, I will, I will make an exception. So I, I am really, really enthusiastic, uh, about that, uh, costume. Uh, so I think I've covered just about everything I'd want to say about Sora. Um, you know, interesting, I actually didn't find a ton of Sakurai-isms in, this presentation, there was the point where he did the, the what? When, right after when Sora is revealed, like, you know, basically being in line with everyone going, wait, is this really happening? Oh my goodness. So, uh, I, I, I feel like that was, that was pretty, pretty appropriate. Um, apparently if you look at the, I'm looking at the Smash Wiki article, they already have a ton of trivia about Sora on here. I don't want to reference a ton of this just because, I mean, you can go read the article. They, I'm sure they don't want me just reading their their material, but there is some fun stuff. Like, yeah, I guess in some ways maybe Sakurai wasn't lying to us because Bayonetta was the winner among quote-unquote 
realizable and negotiable characters. So obviously the, the terms change now that we're a good five years out from that, which the fact that Bayonetta was released to Smash Brothers five years ago makes me feel really old, despite barely being 21. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, outside of the, the, what? The super, like, dramatic Sakurai. <laughs> there really, there really weren't a, a ton of Sakurai-isms outside of, um, you know, just, uh, that he is surprised as, you know, just as surprised as us that he was able to make, uh, Sora be a, 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 a character in, um, uh, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. So, uh, like I said, I, I am very happy for those folks who've been wanting Sora all the way back since 2008, since they realized that, uh, non- uh, Nintendo characters could be in Smash Brothers. I'm just, I'm very happy for you folks. Um, and I hope everybody enjoys this character. Like I said, you know, uh, in, in past video or in past, uh, segments on, uh, the normal podcast, uh, as much as I clearly have other characters I want, you know, I'd love to see Klonoa. I'd love to see, of course, Phoenix Wright be, um, in Smash Brothers. Uh, I, I, I can't be upset at this point about any other characters. I've got most of the ones that I really wanted. I've got King K. Rule representing my most nostalgic, you know, game ever, Donkey Kong Country. Well, top three most nostalgic alongside Super Mario World. Um, and I've got Banjo and Kazooie in the game, which, I mean, yeah, obviously I really like Rare Wear. I, you know, in fact, I was wearing my uh, uh, Rare Wear sweatshirt today, but I, it's hot in here because I had to turn off all the fans so that I wouldn't have, so I could control some background noise, but I digress. Um, and I just seeing that like remarriage of like rare Nintendo, I just, I feel like that was significant in some ways. Like I've, I've got like plenty of characters in Smash Brothers that I have always wanted. So it's, it's just great to see people, uh, truly get the characters that they want. And, you know, in, in line with, uh, Sora coming to Smash Brothers. It was announced that all of the Kingdom Hearts games are now coming to uh, Switch as well in the form of the ridiculously titled collections Kingdom Hearts HD 1.5 plus 2.5 Remix, the HD 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue, and of course uh, Kingdom Hearts 3. But for some reason, they're all only cloud versions. I could maybe understand that for Kingdom Hearts 3. I don't know how intense of a game it is, but did it, it, it really need to be the case that um, for sure one collection, potentially another collection, uh, if I recall, definitely 1.5 and 2.5 remakes or both on PS3. Is there any reason why a PS3 game collection could not be uh, natively ported to the Switch? I mean, come on, Square Enix. I, I know that y'all can be cheap, but I have a hard time believing that at least that one could not get, even if, even if it didn't get a physical release, but it just couldn't get a regular release. It had to be a cloud version. I mean, again, I could maybe, maybe see Kingdom Hearts 3 being justified in being as a cloud version, but that's just gonna, you know, who, unless someone only has the Switch, who's going to want to pick these up? As great as it is that they're coming to Switch, you know, they're not going to be equal versions to the other uh, versions of these games. So, you know, a win and a loss. But that doesn't, like I said, that doesn't make Sora in Smash Brothers any less uh, fantastic. Um, but, you know, uh, of course... Uh, the announcement that Sora would be coming came from a uh, Nintendo Direct that was actually a couple of weeks ago at this point. What was it? December? December. <laughs> if only already. Uh, September 23rd. That would be uh, week, about a week and a half ago at this point. So I do plan uh, here on the rest of this episode, just uh, this Creative Outlet bonus just kind of covering that. So if you're interested in that, then please stick around. If you just wanted to hear me finish up my Smash Brothers coverage. I do plan on doing at least one more Smash Brothers related segment, just kind of now that Super Smash Brothers Ultimate is indeed fully complete, uh, going over any final thoughts on the game, uh, or just like maybe rounding it up. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure what that's going to look like yet. That's probably going to be in my, my last episode of the year following, um, 
our creative outlet gaming birthday extravaganza series. Um, but I just have a few other news things to, to, that I want to talk about. Uh, so this is something that I would have talked about in my, uh, Donkey Kong episode if, you know, this news had come out at the start of the semester when I recorded all the intros, but it, indeed it is official that Super Nintendo World is getting, uh, the Donkey Kong expansion. You know, I might have, I think I might have talked about that it was a rumor in, uh, the intro. Of course, that intro just hasn't seen the light of day yet since the Donkey Kong episode is the final, uh, episode in, um, my uh creative outlet gaming birthday extravaganza series coming this uh start of december um but yeah i mean it's official we're we're actually gonna gonna see the world of donkey kong become a reality in uh, as the form of a a theme park so i'm excited i you know i love donkey kong country as a kid it's nice to see the series get the recognition that i think it indeed deserves so uh uh just you know, good news all around there. Um, but with that, like, little brief aside out of the way, let's talk about what was announced in this September's Nintendo Direct. I don't plan on going in, like, chronological order. I, I pulled up the article, uh, the roundup from Nintendo Life here, just because, trust me, with a lot of the things that I've been doing, I do not have the time to uh, write up some notes on this. I wish I did, but, uh, you know... 18 credits is plenty of work to be uh, doing already. So I'm just going to take this from the top here and start with, oh boy, probably the most polarizing aspect of the Nintendo Direct, which is we now know the cast of the Super Mario Illumination movie. And man, oh man, it is everything I thought it would be. I, I mean, I, I, I'm not as good as apparently the guy who on Twitter predicted that Chris Pratt would be Mario, but... It's just such an illumination move to have your entire cast in this animated movie be all celebrities. It's it's just, it's everything. It's the perfect storm. Um, I mean, you know, there's nothing wrong with these actors. I, I want to particularly point out um, Anya Taylor, Joy is Peach. I don't know anything about her. Um, so I really have no idea of whether she is or is not a good casting. I'm sure she'll be a, a perfectly fine... Um, actress to play uh princess peach um i just i don't i don't happen to uh to to, to know anything about her so none, none of my commentary um really fits uh with her it's it's a little bit of everyone else that i i at least have some idea of who they are like i mean I, i've seen chris pratt in park and recreation he's fine but he's not mario <laughs> You know, like, maybe he can do a, a good impression of Mario. Like, I, I don't I don't want to make that still on the table. Same thing with Charlie Day, his Luigi. He apparently, I mean, he's in, um, isn't he? It's Always Sunny with, uh, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia is, like, one of the main characters on that. Like, they're fine in that, but neither of them scream Mario or Luigi to me. Um... And, you know, to make it worse, Charles Martinet is in the movie. I mean, he's just a bunch of cameos. He doesn't actually get to play the characters that he should play, but he's in the movie. So, you know, I, I can't say I'm surprised, but I'm just... Mm, this is one thing that I wanted to be surprised by, to see that we're going to, you know, we're going to try to keep fairly consistent or at least pick um, actors who can do a pretty good job of... Um, uh, being similar to the main, the main, uh, actors for these characters. And, you know, some of them, like, you know, Jack Black as Bowser, I think that'll actually be great. And Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong, people, I think people are gonna, are being a little too negative on that. I kind of expected some, um, some super over Hollywoodification here, and I don't mind a little bit of it, uh, like I said, those two stick out as fine. Keegan Michael Key is Toad, not so much. Not, mm -hmm, I'm not so sure about that. Same thing with uh, what is it? Fred Armisen is Cranky Kong. Which the fact that Cranky is in the movie is a little bit of a, a deep cut for the folks that I think are going to be seeing this movie, um, as well as who else? Uh, Sebastian Maniscalco. I have. Uh, honestly, I'd never heard of him. He's apparently playing Spike, which that's another really deep cut because that's the the foreman in Wrecking Crew on the NES. 
Uh, and then um, Kevin Michael Richardson is playing uh, Kamek. So, of course, that's the Magic Koopa who uh, kidnap, kidnapped baby Luigi in uh, Yoshi's Island. So, you know, I remain... I don't remember if I, I don't know how much I've talked about this movie on here, but I remain cautiously pessimistic. I hope that this will come out fine, but man, man, oh man, this does not give me the confidence that I was hoping to be surprised with with this movie. So, out, again, outside of Jack Black and Seth Rogen, just not so sure. I'm going I'm to see how this comes out, but I'm thinking it's going to be not so great. Um, another big thing that I got that I got, in my opinion, a more surprisingly positive um, response was the expansion pack, which is pretty funny, uh, considering the contents of it, uh, coming to Nintendo Switch Online. So this is going to so there apparently there's going to be a new higher membership tier coming to Switch Online later this October. And no, I apologize, I'm not going to do a separate creative outlet bonus just for uh, this, just to cover what's actually the price of this expansion pack. Um, but the 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 higher tier tier of Switch Online is going to come with uh, the Nintendo 64 and Sega Genesis uh, applications, like how in the regular tiers you already get the NES Switch Online and SNES Switch Online. Um, so now, if you just get this higher tier, you also get uh, Nintendo 64 games, and yeah, Sega Genesis games, which is pretty surprising to me. I, I mean, it's not like too unsurprising since Sega Genesis games were already on uh, the Wii Virtual Console and Sega Game Gear games were on the 3DS's Virtual Console, but considering that Sega had sw uh, skipped Genesis games on Wii U and that, I mean, there's already like Genesis game, a Genesis game collection on Switch, and considering the Sega Ages releases of some Genesis games already on Switch, not to mention Sonic Origins coming out next year, I just, it's a little surprising that Sega would agree to just, yeah, sure, we'll give you our, a bunch of Genesis games for Switch Online for a greater service, why not? It's just surprising to me. Um, it's not a bad thing. I think the the you know actually let me pull up the the selection here the selection's not bad um and like with the other um with like with the uh other oh my goodness the other game services you can get a a brand new uh controller so uh, man i think i put it oh i have it sitting up there but i've shown it off before i have an snes controller i haven't the nes um, Switch Online controllers, just because I think they're neat little replicas, and sometimes, I mean, I, I, I still use them. Uh, now there's going to be one of a Nintendo 64 controller, which is pretty neat, but also, like, huge, and there's going to be one of a Sega Genesis controller, and also, side note, the Mega Drive version in the Japanese version of the uh, Sega Genesis service is going to use the six-button controller, but in North America, and I think in Europe, I I'm pretty confident as it is uh, the case in um, in Europe. You only get the three button controller. I don't know why, but apparently that's the case. I think that's kind of silly. Uh, it should just be the six button controller across the planet. But it is what it is. Um, but as far as the game selection, it's it's not bad. It's pretty standard. You know what we've seen so far. With I think a couple of uh exceptions uh based on what's been in the virtual console in the past um launching with the expansion pack for the nintendo 64 we're gonna have super mario 64 i already have super mario 3d all stars so that's not a like a huge deal to me especially because this should probably just actually be the original super mario 64 um i would hope that Mario 3D All-Stars will get an update to make it compatible with the Nintendo 64 controller uh, for Switch Online. If it doesn't, I'm sure it'll be perfectly playable and I can figure it out, so not a big deal. Um, we're going to get Mario Kart 64. You kind of have to do that one. You know, it's only one of the biggest Nintendo 64 games, even if it's not my favorite Mario Kart. In fact, I think it's 
probably, if it's not the worst Mario Kart for me, it, it, it is down at the bottom, and I don't care how many people I make mad with that, I do not like Mario Kart 64. Uh, Star Fox 64, that's pretty cool, that's, uh, I, I really like the 3DS version of that game, so it'll be neat to actually play the Nintendo 64 original, I actually don't think it's going to be too, too different, uh, so that could be one that I actually see myself, if I were to upgrade to the expansion pack, um, spending a decent amount of time on uh, Yoshi's Story. Again, another good game. One of the few 2D platformers on the Nintendo 64. That's the other thing. It's some of these games I actually do have physically or in some other form. Like I said, Mario 64 I have on 3D All-Stars. Mario Kart 64 I have on the Wii Virtual Console. I have the 3DS version of Star Fox 64 as well as the next game, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Uh, Yoshi's Story I actually have a Nintendo 64 cartridge of. Um, the only two games that are on the launch version of this service that I don't have in any way are Sin and Punishment, which that is considered to be a really good rail shooter, so I I would be down to to, to try that one out, uh, as well as one that I know nothing about, which is Windback Covert Operations, um, so that'll be interesting to try out, um, but otherwise, I mean, Mario Tennis, that I have as a cartridge, and I actually find that I tend, uh, there's something about the, um, the, 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 first two Mario Tennis games that I, I'm just not as big a fan of. I don't think the controls are as tight, um, but I understand that those are nostalgic games for a bunch of folks. So I that's one that I'd be more willing to put more time into compared to Mario Kart 64, which I just... Oh, that game is not very good. Uh, and then there's Dr. Mario 64, which... It's Dr. Mario. It actually hasn't been re-released on... Um, uh, the virtual console in any way, if I remember correctly, so that's kind of significant. Uh, as far as future releases, we're going to be seeing The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, another good uh, choice, but I have the 3DS version, so I'll just keep playing that one. Uh, Mario Golf is going to be coming. I, I have the Nintendo 64 version of that. Not a great uh, game, similarly to Mario Tennis. I, I, I think Mario Golf Toadstool Tour is still much better, and I'd actually even put Mario Golf Super Rush above uh, Mario Golf 64, uh, there's just, you know, just aspects of it that don't feel, that don't feel as good, mostly coming down to the bar. In fact, I think I talk about this in the Nintendo 64 episode when I talk about, uh, Mario Golf, that it's like, oh man, I struggle with the, 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 the power meter because it's just too darn fast, especially when you're going back for the accuracy. Um, but I digress. Uh, we're going to be getting Pokemon Snap. That's one I'm excited for. I wanted to, I've wanted wanted to pick up new Pokemon Snap on Switch. I just haven't bothered with it yet. Again, uh, Nintendo 64 seems to have a good quantity of rail shooters, so I, you know, I, I'll definitely get a little more breadth in the genre uh, with Pokemon Snap, uh, Sin and Punishment, and, of course, replaying Star Fox 64. F-Zero X, that's a big one. It's just nice nice to see F-Zero in the spotlight, even if it's just the littlest, littlest bit. Uh, Kirby 64, uh, again, we're just continuing. I have F-Zero X as a cartridge. Kirby 64, I have as a cartridge. Paper Mario, I have as uh, on the Wii Virtual Console. Um... Yeah, Kirby 64, that's another fun little game. Not one of my, again, not one of my favorites. Uh, Sakurai's only role in it was voicing King DDD, which is a little, little interesting uh, fun fact about that game. Um, but, you know, I can't say no to having it on the service. Uh, Paper Mario, uh, you know, that's one that I want to go back to because I know the original two Paper Mario games are supposed to be amazing, fantastic games. I got lost in Chapter 2 somehow in the desert area in Paper Mario, so I'd like to actually beat it. So, again, if I get this service, this is I would be more and more likely to play it. Uh, Japan is getting Custom Robo and Custom Robo V2. I don't know anything about those, of course, if you have a uh, Japanese account on your Switch. I oh, I don't, I think you might need to have a Japanese Switch online subscription. I don't recall, um, but you should be able to play those if those are games that you're interested in. And the big one, the humongous one for me, the return to Nintendo platforms for Banjo-Kazooie. Now, it's not going to be as good as the Xbox Live Arcade version of Banjo-Kazooie, you know, the new HD version. I totally understand. This is just going to be the Nintendo 64 version of Banjo-Kazooie, but just like getting Banjo and Smash Brothers, this is like, oh, the return, the return home, as far as I'm concerned. Because Banjo-Kazooie, 
that fits way more on the Switch than it does on the Xbox, in my opinion, even if the Xbox version of uh, Banjo-Kazooie is clearly, clearly superior. So uh, that's just like, whoa, that's it, like it's, it's happening. Banjo-Kazooie is back on a Nintendo platform. That's like after not having it on the virtual console on the Wii or the Wii U, that's like unbelievable in the same way that it was when um banjo got added to smash because i mean i remember like it was just kind of the the banjo kazooie just kind of showed up in a little like set of boxes you know just representing the art flying by and they just kind of brushed it off as like oh you know banjo kazooie is going to be on there it's like whoa 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 this is effectively microsoft's game on the switch like, I, I, I still can't get over that. I know it's been a few years now that um, you've had Xbox Game Studios uh, games coming to Switch and even Cuphead on the PS4, too. But it's still, like, weird as, you know, all the rest of video game history has basically had uh, Nintendo and Sony and Microsoft just kind of being like, no, we're not going to do anything together. And now that we're in the age of cross-play and the age of apparently microsoft just being like yeah here you go here's our game on your service uh and and people bring up a good point it's probably because they rightfully understand that you're gonna make more money by just giving uh like selling this license to play this game than you are uh, off of hardware because there's a lot more cost that goes into hardware uh but 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 i digress and you know making games and the 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 point is it's cheaper to do something like this it it actively makes microsoft more money but it's just it feels significant because i mean i just i never thought that i would see this game come home in a way so um but the sega genesis games uh, that uh, for me that's actually the more interesting one because i outside of sonic 2 and um dr robotnik's mean bean machine because that's just puyo puyo i haven't played any of these games so there and and, there's a decent few on here that's like oh you know i i've heard really good things about strider but i've never had a genesis and i've never been just so enthusiastic to spend however much it would cost to to download it to try it out but as part of the switch online expansion pack sure you know that i don't i don't want to i i i I still plan, I don't know why I haven't done it yet, but I still plan at some point to do my uh, Switch Online uh, focused segment, but I think I'll give a a brief little synopsis here now, right after I finish, because I just kind of glossed over the list of Genesis games. Uh, we're going to be having Castlevania Bloodlines, the first Castlevania game on uh, the Switch Online service, which is a little interesting because if I remember correctly, it's also in the Castlevania collection, so... Another weird repeat. Uh, Contra Hardcore, so Konami, Konami's playing pretty nice here. Uh, like I said, Mean Bean Machine, Echo the Dolphin, that'll be interesting. I've heard very polarizing things about Echo the Dolphin. Some people love it, a lot of people hate it. Uh, Golden Axe, that I hear is kind of an okay beat em up sort of game. Uh, one that I'm really interested in actually is Gunstar Heroes, because that was supposed to be one of the major um, uh, inspirations for Freedom Planet, even though obviously that was the largest uh inspiration for freedom planet was clearly sonic the hedgehog um but the gunner elements with characters like torque in the game were inspired by gunstar heroes so that'll that'll be fun uh musha is on here i don't know anything about musha um so i'll learn what it is if slash when i were if slash when i get the expansion pack try it out uh fantasy 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 star 4 um that's the obviously the fourth game of the fantasy star a series of role-playing games. I'm sure that'll be fun. Again, not ton of, not much of an RPG guy, but I might try it out. Uh, Rye Star, that one I'm interested in. That is a, another Sonic Team game. So uh, I, I like a bunch of their other work, and I, I've heard a ton of really good things about Rye Star, so I'm down for trying that out. Uh, we have Shining Force. That's a strategy RPG, so that could be that could be a fun little different time. I don't play a ton of those. Uh, Shinobi Three. You know, another action platformer. I've never played a Shinobi game. That'll be fun. Sonic 2. It's Sonic 2. Um, Of course, Streets of Rage 2. That's pretty huge, considering how big uh, Streets of Rage 4 was last year for a bunch of folks. I'm I'm sure people are looking forward to uh, Streets of Rage 2 on Switch. I hear it's a really good beat-em-up. And then, like I said, Strider is... uh, I think that's... Isn't that the... I think that's the only 
uh, Capcom game on this whole uh, service so far. So that'll that'll be fun. I, again, I've heard really good things about Strider. It's supposed to be a, another good uh, action platformer, so I'll be interested in trying that out. Um, but really, that all comes down to how much more will the expansion pack cost? Uh, my Switch Online subscription has actually already lapsed for the year um, because, like I said, I can't play hardly any of the games that I would want online anyway here at school, so why would I spend the $20 on the service, right? It, it just doesn't make sense. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, the, you know, the ability to purchase two more unique controllers and these two extra game services are not worth a ton more to me. Uh, I would say if the expansion pack increases the price to $25, I would go for it. Maybe $30 just to try it out for a year, but, you know, I I don't think this adds that much more value. I think, um, you know, to give my super short version of my, at some point, I'm, I swear I will do it, uh, Switch Online segment, um, I would agree with Scott the Waz when he says, with Switch Online, it's $20, it gets a pass, so... But if this expansion pack ca causes it to be much more than $20, I am not going for it. it th that is not worth it to me. Uh, let's see, next on this uh, Nintendo Life article here, here was the big one for me. This is what I thought was the highlight of the whole Direct. Kirby and the Forgotten Land, because they finally did it. Hal finally hit that, in like, broke that in case of emergency glass. We are getting the first ever 3D Kirby game. You know, like, I mean, gaming, like, characters have only moved into 3D for, uh, like, 25 years now when the Nintendo 64 and the PlayStation and the Saturn were all the rage. Um, and Kirby's coming here all that much time later and doing his first ever fully 3D game. So, you know, I think that is huge news. Like, it, it's, it's just, it's been a long time coming. I've been thinking, like, tick tock, tick tock, when is this ever going to happen? Um, I don't know a ton about the game uh, yet, just because, you know, Nintendo hasn't released a ton about it. Uh, it appears that the world is going to be, like, an abandoned city. Like, we see all these, these not quite ruinous skyscrapers, but we see skyscrapers in a mall and everything looks kind of dilapidated and covered in moss so it's, it's some sort of past civilization it's supposed to be coming out um in spring of 2022 so not super far from now and you know i could not think of a better way to celebrate the 30th anniversary of kirby than by saying you know let's do it let's finally give them a 3d game and see how that works out and uh, you know, people were really liking the formula that was established with Return to Dreamland on the Wii, um, but that formula, form, wow, I really can't speak, that formula was used for four games, people, uh, I, I sensed were kind of over it with Kirby Star Allies, even though I, super unpopular opinion, will contend that that game is better than uh, Kirby Planet Robobot, uh, but you know, it, it's, it's just nice to see Kirby actually back in the limelight. Because Kirby, outside of Kirby Fighters 2 and, um, oh, what was it, Super Kirby Clash? There just hasn't been a much Kirby other than just the random side game here. So it's nice to see a, a fully, a full 3D Kirby adventure finally coming to be. Uh, the last game shown in the Direct and the next one on this list was Bayonetta 3. Now, this isn't a game that I'm really interested in playing, but, you know, it's kind of sort of been on the back burner since, uh, the Game Awards 2017. Like, we've known about it for a while, so it is about darn time that we finally get some footage of that game. And, you know, I, I, uh, I feel for Hideki Kamiya and his comp and, and Platinum Games with everybody handing them like, when are you ever going to show us Bayonetta 3? And now people have finally seen it. Because like you said, it's it was really Nintendo's call on when they could finally show off Bayonetta 3. But look, it's apparently it's launching sometime in 2022. Um, you know, I, I only expect the best from the guy who uh, was the Japanese voice of Godot in Phoenix Radius Attorney Trials and Tribulation. So I'm sure it'll be a great game. You know, just... Not really my thing. Uh, I like some hack and slashes. Like, I, I tried out Hyrule Warriors. Haven't 
and uh, Fire Emblem Warriors actually I haven't just I just haven't played much uh, beyond those two. So, but uh, I'm certainly open. Maybe there at some point I'll finally be like, you know, I should try out Bayonetta and I'll pick them up. So, never say never. It's just I, I think it's significant that we're finally getting this information. This is not quite uh, uh, something I'm looking forward to yet. Uh, let's see, as far as other things I'm interested in, I'm going to skip Monster Hunter Rise. I don't really care for Monster Hunter. Um, oh, Splatoon 3 did get more news uh, in the Direct focused on the campaign. Now, I was kind of surprised because I noticed a bunch of uh, people thinking, no, nah, they're not going to show any Splatoon 3 information in this Direct. It's too soon. Um, and my thought when I read that was, I mean, really? This is only going to be like one of Nintendo's biggest games in 2022, and uh, we're three months away to 2022. Even if Splatoon 3 is a holiday game, like, that's coming up pretty soon. Uh, you know, it's it's within a year and a half away, so I could not believe that people are thinking there wouldn't be Splatoon 2 information, or er, Splatoon 2, Splatoon 3 information. Um, I still feel pretty similarly to how I felt um, when I first when Splatoon 3 is first revealed. I don't think we need this yet. Even if I understand that Splatoon 2 uh, next year will be five years old, which, again, makes me feel very old, despite being only 21. Um, but, look, if people are excited for it, that's great. Um, like I said, they focused a lot on the single player, and to be honest, I... I didn't like the single player in Splatoon 1. I didn't like the single player in Splatoon 2. I don't think Splatoon 3, with the return of the mammalians, apparently mammals are resurfacing in the Splatoon world after having been a planet of all um, squid people. Uh, I don't think that Splatoon 3's uh, campaign is going to be the one that changes my mind. So I'm, I'm still hoping that... Uh, uh, the Splatoon team shows off more about the battles and finally shows me something or some reason why uh, why I should be sold on Splatoon 3 over just continuing to play Splatoon 2 that I already have. And, uh, you know, one thing I'll, I'll really admit, I remember that what I was talking about in uh, when I focused on the Direct earlier this year, there's even one phrase in here that immediately sets me off uh, to continue to be, like, harder in my position. It says that there will be new and returning stages for the battles. The one thing I said that would get me to be like, okay, I can understand why you'd want both Splatoon 2 and Splatoon 3 on the same system would be if it were only new stages, and now I know there are returning stages. I don't even remember them talking about the fact that there would definitely be returning stages in Splatoon 3, but... Now they really gotta show me something that convinces me that Splatoon 3 is necessary alongside Splatoon 2. Otherwise, like, I, I would much rather just keep playing Splatoon 2 and get Splatoon 3 at a later time when it's uh, cheaper or on sale, but it is what it is. Uh, let's see, what uh, what other stuff interested me? Ooh, uh, there was Chocobo GP revealed, so Square Enix is uh, doing a, a new uh, Chocobo Racing game. Uh, Chocobo Racing was a PS1 kart racer. Um, and I, I don't remember if I even had that on, because I have, like, tabs with folders of games that I want to pick up. I don't, I didn't even have Chocobo Racing in my list. I really should have. Um, but now with Chocobo GP, I'm probably just going to pick that up at some point, uh, this 2020, this 2022. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a kart racer in the vein of Mario Kart and Crash Team Racing and, and all the Sonic Kart racers, um, but instead of those characters, it's Final Fantasy, and all the items are, um, like, magic, uh, from the series, so, hey, that, that's pretty neat. The one thing that'll get me to, uh, get it, uh, Chocobo Racing to be, like, a day one buy for me would be if, uh, Chocobo Racing had a secret extra Dragon Quest character, since I'm, you know, more of a Dragon Quest person than I am a, uh, a Final Fantasy person. Yeah, nothing wrong with Final Fantasy, I just, it's not what I prefer. Uh, oh, Triangle Strategy was uh, shown off. Uh, I did not play Triangle Strat or Project the the demo for Project Triangle Strategy, and I didn't play Octopath Traveler at all. Um, but it's good to see the HD 2D uh, games keep on coming. I'm still waiting to hear more on the Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D remake. That's the the first game I'll probably jump into that uh, uh, uses this engine. But hey, you know if if the the 
team for Triangle Strategy is just following what they did with Octopath Traveler and it works out just as well again, more power to them. I'm sure it'll be great. I'm still not over the uh, burn from the trailer when it looked like, is this going to be Ace Attorney 7? And then it wasn't. But, uh, you know, if and Triangle Strategy's not... Uh, you know, Octopath Traveler worked as a name for the game. Triangle Strategy is like the most generic name for anything I've ever heard. So I'm sure it'll be fine um, and I'm sure it'll be good, but I'm it's not for me. Uh, same with Act Razor Renaissance. That's a, like that's pretty neat that it's uh, coming back. Uh, in fact, I had no idea. In fact, it might have been a surprise that this classic uh, Super Nintendo game was getting a remake. So I'm glad for all the folks that are getting that. I hear it's like a cult classic SNES game. Uh, it's one I really should try, but I'm just I'm kind of intimidated by the God game uh, elements of Act Razor. Um, I mean, from here on out, I'm basically just going to be skipping what I'm not so much interested in. Oh, yeah. I'm, I guess I would be remiss to talk about that Delta Rune Chapter 2 was finally revealed, and that's been a huge thing uh, across the internet so far. I did not play Undertale, I did not play Delta Rune in any way, shape, or form, but people really like it, so if they want to keep playing it, that's their prerogative. Uh, what else is in this article that I'm like really interested in? Oh, here we go. Uh, Animal Crossing updates. I hon honestly, I thought those were done. I did not real. I, I just figured with how much time it's been since the Mario 35th update to uh, Animal Crossing New Horizons that the updates were just kind of over. But hey, I guess apparently later this month uh, in October, there's going to be a uh, an Animal Crossing uh, New Horizons update finally adding Brewster to uh, the museum. They, I mean, they've been talking about that for a while. Like, people have been just noting all the Brewster-related things in the game files. Maybe this update, since, it, you know, the Animal Crossing New Horizons is getting a whole direct, uh, new direct later this October dedicated to it. Maybe there will be, like, gyroids finally added to the game. This, you know, this could be the thing that gets me to sit down and actually go back to Animal Crossing New Horizons after not having played it for months on end at this point. So... Uh, if any, if there are any other creative outlet bonuses, that that would be the reason just to add onto my, you know, the creative outlet podcast covers uh, Animal Crossing playlist on the YouTube channel. That one, unless it somehow reaches full podcast length, as this uh, bonus I knew would with both Sora and the um, direct here uh, that I'm talking about would, then maybe I would add it to the audio list. But I would just expect that as another low light, not so much edited video. Um, I also talked about the Smash update. Obviously, I already covered Sora, so no need to talk about that. Yeah. Um, oh, Hyrule Warriors, the Age of Calamity DLC got, uh, finally, uh, revealed. The, the two new, or is, I think it's a combination character is revealed. I do not own Age of Calamity. I don't really know a ton about it. Um, I did play the demo of it. I don't know how much I've talked about it, but I did. I don't remember if I talked about it in the uh, last direct or the last uh, DLC or the first wave of DLC for this was announced. But I played the demo. I didn't like it as much as the original Hyrule Warriors. I know some people liked it better. Um, I it, it just didn't appeal to me. Uh, I don't know what it was. I, it just didn't hit me in the same way that the original Hyrule Warriors uh, did. Oh, Mario Party Superstars got its last two boards revealed. I still maintain that there should have been six boards so that there could have been two boards from every Nintendo 64 game, but whatever. Now we know the whole list of boards coming to Mario Party Superstars. I haven't pre-ordered it yet. If there's any game I, get, I willingly spend money on this semester, that this would be it. Um, the two new reveals were Yoshi's Tropical Island from Mario Party 1 as well as Horror Land from Mario Party 2. Uh, Woody Woods was form formally revealed, but we already knew it would be coming because it was kind of the in the box art, so I don't know why uh, Nintendo felt like they absolutely had to show it off. Um, there were a couple of other, like, side modes, Mount Mini Games was shown off, but, you know, I don't, I, I don't care about that so much. We now know the hundred mini games that are coming, and I'm very sad about how little uh, Mario Party 8 representation there is, because I'm sorry, folks, I'm in the generation that really likes Mario Party 8, even if I know that it's 
not consider, even if I know that like on an objective level, it's not actually one of the best uh, 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 Mario Party games. So I just wish there were more mini games from it. Kind of like uh, how the, actually the top 100 on 3DS, I think did have more Mario Party 8 mini games, but um, you know, it, it, it just is what it is. If anything, if there's a Mario Party game that should get DLC, this is it. I want more boards. I want more Mario Party representation and superstars. I think it could be amazing, but they just they gotta do it. And I think I think this could be the one. I am I am legit excited for this. Um, oh, there's a little more uh, Mario Golf Super Rush DLC shown off. That's the next thing on this list here. Um, free content is free content. Like I said when I talked about um, the first set of updates, I'm always down for more free stuff. Uh, but admittedly, um, I didn't like this update as much as I like the Mario Tennis Aces uh, DLC content. Granted, I'm sure a big part of it is just that um, now I'm a little more over Mario Golf Super Rush and I can't even play it online like I want to, and so I can't um, do the monthly challenges like I do with Mario Tennis Aces, so... You know, it's basically just a couple more courses in the game uh, like there have been. And I'm, um, unlike uh, unlike uh, New Donk City and some of the other courses I like in the game, the I've played them both. This, like, it's called Blustery Basin. is like a wintry course in the spiky palms. I've played them both. They both follow the design of the rookie course where you don't really have set holden lines you more so have it's a weird it's hard to explain it's like a bunch of fairways that all just mishmash and cross over that lead to holes so like you have an 18th hole for example but it isn't a clear design to an 18th hole like you would have on a golf course it's like you can cross the same fairway that you might have had for hole three to the 18th hole and i just i don't even if that is better for speed golf, I just don't find that as interesting. So, and that's just a bit of a shame. Oh, and then there are actually two characters added in the form of Koopa Troopa and Ninji. I would have liked more exciting characters. Uh, I think I'm kind of at the point, and I know people have been th- uh, feeling this way for a while with uh, Mario games, including Mario Kart and uh, Mario Party, but I want more of the, like, bigger time side characters from like the Mario RPGs to finally get into mainline Mario games. I want, I want Professor Egad as a character in here. I want, um, like, man, now I'm blanking on characters. I want, uh, oh, what's her name? Starlo from the Mario and Luigi series in, uh, in, uh, my goodness, in Mario Golf. That's all I want at this point. Nothing wrong with enemies, but they're just not as exciting. Uh, anything else that I really care about uh, in this list, or think, it, or anything that I just think is like super duper duper significant? Uh, Shin Megami Tensei got a little bit more focus. Again, that's another game we've known about since launch. So it's time to finally see this game t- uh, come to fruition. Uh, no, I think I've covered just about everything that I found significant in the direct. Oh, oh, actually, although I do have to give focus. Uh, Arcade Archives Pac-Man and Xevious are coming to Switch, even though we already have a Namco Museum on Switch, which is the arcade versions of these Namco games. Why? I don't get it. <laughs> we already have Namco Museum. We don't need separate Arcade Archives of Pac-Man and Xevious for $8 a pop when you could just purchase the Namco Museum for $30 on its own, but... Whatever, if that makes people happy, that makes people happy. So, but yeah, that uh, that covers the direct. Um, I don't think there's really any other like big news things that have occurred since uh, I recorded these intros that are really super relevant to me. There hasn't been any big Ace Attorney news. The only thing that's been super like huge to me is now we finally have a release date for Freedom Planet 2, or at least a release window. It's going to be coming spring of 2022 as well. So there's my game of the year 2022. Uh, spoilers, I'm, I'm, I very much doubt that it will not be the game of the year 2022 unless Ace Attorney 7 comes out. Um, but yeah, that, uh, that's the news that has, uh, happened in my, uh, Nintendo realms since, 
I last uh, recorded some intros for you folks. So uh, with that, I'm just I'm just going to close out this creative outlet bonus. Just wanted to get these two topics out here. I thought it would cover, you know, it's been an hour and 15 minutes, which is about as long as the shortest episode I've done of the Creative Outlet podcast. So I figure... I'll throw you guys a bonus episode. This is an episode. This is not episode uh, eighteen because uh, I'm just kind of throwing this in the middle. That's the one. The one reason I wasn't sure if I wanted to do this audio wise is now it's going to kind of throw off the chronology since I'm not going to number this episode like I have all the others. But what can you do? I figured it was worth it. So um, with that, like with your episodes of the Creative Outlet podcast, please do your typical engagement-y things. Yeah, no, there's no reason why you can't do that, even though this is a Creative Outlet bonus. Um, I look forward to everyone in uh, my proceeding episodes now of uh, the Creative Outlet Gaming Birthday Extravaganza that are all set to uh, to release. Uh, I think the next one coming next week, Monday, is my Ace Attorney episode. So that's that's an exciting one because it's like coming out the day before Ace Attorney turns twenty. So uh, I I very much look forward to it. Even if just a piece of art comes out for that day, I think it'll be a fantastic day. Uh, But yeah, with that, like I said, voicemails, likes, comments, subscriptions, follows, hearts, whatever your podcast platform allows. Um, Thank you very much for listening in, watching in, and I will see everyone next time on uh, the Creative Outlet podcast or, um, you know, the potential next Creative Outlet bonus probably focused on the Animal Crossing New Horizons updates. Thank you very much, everyone.